are on now, so uh, we can start. Uh, I would like to say uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, as I think we have a participant from all over the world. My name is Slavomir Spunar, and I'm International Marketing Director in Sangoban. And we are thrilled to start this first webinar of the Multicomfort Student Contest 2019. Our today's topic is Introduction uh, the task with its context in the urban plan of, the, of the Iran, as well as <coughs> with the context of the nearest neighborhood of Crescent Sago area. We would like to, uh, I would like to introduce our speakers of today, Demetrio uh, Scopeliti, advisor to the deputy mayor of, for urban planning of the city of Milan, who will uh, introduce us to the uh, outlines and the focus areas of the Milan 2030 plan. After that, I will shortly introduce the scope of the task of this year competition. And we will hear about the uh, context of the neighborhood from Antonella Buchneve, Vice President and Council Member for Urban Planning in the District 3 of Milan, where our plot is located. Antonella is also the teacher of urban design in Polytechnic of Milan. All this, uh, I think, should take uh, uh, roughly 40 uh, minutes of uh, the hour that is in front of us. And after that, we will have a chance to answer your questions if you will uh, write them on the main chat area. So without uh, further delay, I would like to pass the word to uh, Demetrio to introduce to us the objectives for Milan 2030. Hello, everybody, and thanks, Slavomir, for the introduction. Uh, I will briefly introduce you where uh, the direction that the city of Milan is taking in in, in relation to uh, to its strategy to for the future and particularly for urban planning. Uh, we call this plan the Milan 2030 because uh, this is the uh, the timeline that we want to that this plan as as a as a goal as a name and mm, this picture is showing more or less. The fact that this doesn't, don't, uh, this is not the plan of a deputy mayor. This is not a plan uh, of the mayor itself, but it's a, a plan that want to be shared uh, with the population, with the with the stakeholders. And we are still discussing uh, since this plan is not approved yet. So we uh, we are giving you uh, and we are using this competition in a way as a test uh, for some of the of the rules and objectives that we are uh, shaping. Uh, with the future city plan, so we think this is this can be a great opportunity to to test uh, our strategy. Uh, I will briefly go through a series of um, high-level objectives that this is more or less what we want to achieve uh, uh, with this with this new strategy. Of course, this this plan will talk about uh, the reduction of private traffic and, and the conception of a new kind of mobility, of sustainable mobility within the city. At the same time, uh, these are some, some, let's say, requests from the citizens that we, are, uh, that we use as a, as a, as a claim. We, uh, we would like to have a, a city which is more uh, friendly for young and for young generation, also in terms of environment, green environment. Uh, there is another topic which is very important uh, as a request by the citizens, which is the fact that we need uh, more affordable houses, um, particularly for uh, the attraction of young population. And this is one of the main uh, topics we will see will be also part of the competition. Um, Another factor which is relevant is the factor that is the fact that basically we are attracting young generation because of uh, the great role of universities and cultural hub in the city, and this is something we want to stress and continue and continue. And then finally, there is another uh, factor which is key uh, for our city plan, which is the mayor obsession for the 
uh, for the peripheries, for the neighborhoods of the city, which are uh, far from the city center. Uh, in analyzing the, in starting our our work to to define the the new city plan, we um, we started from a series of key data and metrics. Uh, we call them the drivers of change. Particularly, uh, the, there is a series of factors which are fundamental, which are related to the demography of the city. The city is changing; it's is coming back to grow after a, a long period of. Uh, of decreasing, and in the last 10 years started to grow again in terms of population, and we continue to grow, achieving uh, 1.4 uh, uh, million inhabitants in the city's boundaries. Uh, this, of course, um, is a is a key metric, a key factor because it's related to the uh, capacity of attract for traction that the city uh, started to have again in the last in the last decade, uh, and particularly we are uh, analyzing and we analyze this, the the different grow uh, in the different sectors of the population, and we and we got that basically the the attraction is mainly related to the uh, population between 19 and 35 years old, and the elderly population after 65, uh, which are which is more or less the, 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 the consequence of the capacity of attraction of the city and the natural um, process uh, of aging. Uh, these two factors are also relevant because they change the way uh, change the, 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 the way families are in the city of Milan. These families are shrinking. Uh, and becoming and growing a lot. So basically, we have a need which is changing of having smaller uh, housing, uh, but having more. So this also is relevant because can uh, introduce different uh, factors and different uh, opportunities in terms of defining uh, defining housing. Uh, another. Topic which is which is key is the fact that basically the young population is growing because we are growing in terms of number of students. Uh, starting from 2005 to 2015, the, there has been a growth of more than 25,000 uh, university students only, and this uh, data is still growing. And all the universities in the cities are expanding or uh, are expanding their their they're, they're building their, their, their number, etc. So basically, this is, uh, this is key because we have a very low rate of student housing compared to the number, number of students which is growing, uh, as I said. So if we have to say two big data about uh, the population of the future of the Milan of 2030, we will have 12,000 more people over 85 and uh, loading uh, 50,000 sorry I don't know if it's I'm trying to change the slide and I'm not able at the moment <laughs> oh. here we are and 50,000 more uh, young people between 19 and 34 uh, of course, these two factors are, are key as a, um, as a potential outcome of the competition. Uh, so if we have to say three big statements and high-level statement about the city of the future that we have in mind, uh, of course we want to have a city that uh, grows, but without uh, leaving anyone, anyone behind this kind of growth. So trying to be as inclusive as possible. And the second topic, the second claim, can be that we don't want to grow just in some neighborhoods, just in the city center, but we want to, it will try to, uh, to create um, inclusivity also in terms of, of territory, so also in territorial terms, basically including all the neighborhoods which, which uh, are 
also in the outskirts as, as potential development areas. And the third is that basically uh, we, we are clearly looking to uh, sustainability and we, uh, and we want to improve the quality of life uh, of people, which is of course the one of the, the main goal of a, of a city plan. Uh, to achieve these big goals, we set a series of objectives, which are basically five, and I will try to go uh, quickly through them. The first is the fact that Milan is a metropolitan global connected city. So basically the fact that we are uh, the geography of the city is strictly related to the uh, to the connection nowadays. Um, the the fact that we can move with high speed train really fast uh, in the city of the northern part of Italy uh, makes Milan much larger and with a different shape compared to what was in the past. And this is uh, this is relevant because, as I said before, this changed completely the attractivity of the city. In terms of, uh, of also in terms of dependency from one city to the other, I can, for instance, uh, move from Milan to Turin uh, and commute to work. Something that was probably not that easy ten years ago. And this is, of course, very relevant because it changed completely the attractivity of the city for, for example, for young workers, for students, uh, etc. This is uh, a general context that uh, connects to, um, to our strategy in terms of uh, transport planning. We are uh, working on, enlarge, on expanding the, the metro lines. Uh, we are currently working on the MM4, which is the fifth metro line, uh, bes besides the name, <laughs> is the fifth metro line in the city. And we are also uh, working to expand uh, and to connect within the metropolitan area the, the existing ones. Um, this is an, a, a relevant factor because the Crescian Sago area, the, um, which is, the, which is uh, I would say, the, the, the site of the competition, it is uh, a site which is strictly connected to the, metro, to, the, to the metro station. And this is something very relevant for us because we want to develop particularly those sites uh, as potential areas of, uh, of growth. Uh, one of the consequences of this uh, idea that we have in mind is basically the fact that um, we want to develop in a different way the, those areas that we call nodes. So basically hub, uh, infrastructure hub, which are nowadays functional areas and can be tomorrow uh, something more it can be areas of mixed function, mixed use, it can be entertainment areas, it can be uh, offices, etc. This is, for instance, an example of some of these areas that I'm talking about. This is Molino Dorino, it is basically an interchange hub. Uh, as you can see, it is uh, very functional but not that livable. Even if millions of people go in these sites every day, this is Rogoredo. Uh, which is uh, one of the main train station hub in the southeast part of the city, and this is Garibaldi. So it's also next to the Porta Nuova and Vertical Forest new developments, but still a very functional area without um, without any kind of, of of use. And this is also very interesting because Christian Sago, even if it's a smaller site, uh, nowadays is basically an interchange hub is an interchange area where you can have, is a parking uh, connected to the metro station. And, and it's a parking which is too close to the city center to really uh, work in that, in, that, uh, in that sense. And the idea that we have is to, is to increase the livability and to create a, a different use of that space. Second objective is the, uh, the creation of opportunities, attractivity and the inclusive city. Basically, uh, this relates to a series of strategies which are connected to the uh, to some of the big voids that the city has, um, which are the six that you see in the map. Some of them are historically historical say sites of debates of what should be 
the future for, for these areas. One of the most important is the Bovisa Goccia, which is paradigmatic of a kind of development that we have in mind. So basically, uh, this is a former industrial area, uh, which a very big natural, post-industrial <laughs> natural landscape that grows in the area with a series of monumental uh, heritage building and and the and the next to a university which wants to expand and to grow in the area. So basically these areas that we analyze we call them uh, relevant function uh, strategic function areas basically are uh, the area for development for for services for, for, for big services for relevant services at the metropolitan scale uh, for the city of the future. At a smaller scale, we are also trying to um, allow and facilitate innovation uh, within the city development. So, particularly uh, facilitating the, the the change of views between the building and the other one. So, trying to uh, destroying. Uh, the the barriers between the different categories and, of land use, uh, residential, uh, economic development, uh, offices, etc. So we are trying to facilitate the interchange because we think that the city of the future doesn't have, we, we won't have the, that kind of street categorization of different uses. And having said that, we are also convinced that basically uh, Another fundamental factor of inclusivity is, of course, affordable and social housing. And this is, of course, a key factor for the site that we are going to analyze uh, and to develop with this, with this competition, because uh, the demand that we have, uh, and we described at the beginnings, uh, in terms of population changing, it's, of course, relevant for the kind of uh, offer of housing that we, we, we put on the market. And at the moment, the the, the request of, of young and elderly population is of course very related to the to affordability and if we want to continue to grow as a city which is attractive uh, but inclusive we, this is a fundamental topic that we have to uh, to face a fundamental challenge that we have to face uh, just another thing to mention we um, this strategy is related to the identification in the city of something like 10 uh, housing areas. Christian Sago is one of those, it's the biggest of those. Uh, those are areas, and we will go in detail in, in Slavo, and we'll go in detail uh, in the description of this, where basically we want to create and to um, put the basis for a new kind of development related to housing which is not typical social and affordable housing developments, but can be mixed uh, in terms of mix of function, can be in terms of mix of even of social mix, uh, and also uh, with a strong relation to uh, avoid monofunctional blocks and monofunctional um, activities. Uh, third topic, one of the most important, is the idea that we have of creating a resilient, livable and green city. Uh, we, this is a plan that, of course, uh, trying to push more the brownfield, the work on the brownfield instead of the greenfield. And, and we calculated the effect of our policies, and basically we, this plan is going to reduce the soil consumption of 4% compared to the previous one, uh, which is probably the first time uh, we go into negative numbers, uh, and this is very, very positive. Uh, this is related particularly to the fact that we are reducing uh, the possibility to expand the city in the greenfield that are like this, which were uh, developing areas nowadays. But it's also related to the fact that we have a strategy to um, enlarge the green areas in the city together with the, um, with the development of new parks uh, and green connection and infrastructure in the city. Uh, we count more than 20 uh, new parks already planned. Uh, probably also green areas is something that is can be very connected to the uh, to the Kashinsago area. Uh, and another important factor is the fact that we are changing a brownfield, so a already used land like a car park, and um, 
which is very accessible, probably with the potential also to create more uh, to create more green areas, and also with uh, changing the, the the standards. This slide show you more or less what are the key goals for uh, sustainability related to to the building uh, and to the urban development. We want to stress energy efficiency uh, and the use of renewable renewable energies, but also the ideas of regreening the city. So uh, also using architecture and, uh, as a potential for uh, for creating more green areas and to create uh, to integrate more the green, not just in terms of urban design but also in terms of architecture, and with the with the scope of basically um, reduce the carbon footprint, which is our key goal uh, and something we are really trying to stress uh, in the new plan. Uh, Fourth of the fifth objectives is the um, is the neighbor level. So we want to have a city which is made of 88 neighbors. We 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 define uh, in the in the city plan uh, together with the fact that we uh, we want to uh, foster the um, the local identities to raise. Uh, with the use of with a different concept of use of public space, so we think that basic the, the 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 public space in the in the neighborhoods, in the, particularly in those historic neighborhoods uh, that developed in the in the past, uh, can be a factor of revitalization of of the of the local identities, and um, and to do that we need also to uh, we need to work at the at the two scale. One is the neighbor scale, so creating squares and pedestrian streets and shared space in the in the neighborhoods and also trying to uh, create big projects like the railway yards uh, redevelopment or the um, reopening of the historical channels the Navigli, and the development of new uh, of the redevelopment of new squares like uh, this one for instance Piazzale Macchini but there is another one which is more relevant for the Christian Saguera which is Piazzale Loreto uh, that can be uh, connectors instead of dividers. So basically, can be areas where you can uh, rethink the the use of the space in order to to integrate better the sustainable mobility and connection and connectivity uh, between different areas of the city, which are now disconnected. Uh, so the fifth is the is the fact that we uh, we want to regenerate the city. So we are trying, as I said before, to avoid the redevelopment of the, the development of greenfield. We want to work on the already built. Uh, the Christian Sago site is a paradigmatic example of this. is a is a is a car park, uh, almost empty uh, nowadays, not that used, next to a metro station in a dense neighborhood, uh, but that lot can be, uh, can be the catalyst for new, to be, uh, to be in the new center of that, of that part of the city. And um, we want, thanks to regeneration, we want to create the opportunity for, uh, for spreading the success of the city, which is, uh, we are living nowadays, also to the, to the outskirts. And to do that, we need also to face another relevant fact that is the the spread of abandoned areas and abandoned building. Um, the plan as an as a series of rules basically create incentives for the one that have abandoned building or are in the outskirts and want to uh, regenerate the city and a series of uh, constraints uh, for the ones that are keeping uh, leaving their 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 abandoned their areas of building abandoned. Uh, this is because we want to reduce as much as possible the uh, the rate of abandoned areas in in, in the neighborhoods, uh, which are factors of insecurity and and uh, and are reducing the the, the quality of life, uh, and also using our our own. Uh, abandoned areas or abandoned buildings. We have a high rate of abandoned public building and public housing, particularly, 
to trying to regenerate those and, and, and create inclusivity uh, and change in, into the social housing market. Uh, last objective, which is, which is probably uh, not crit still critical, <laughs> uh, and probably you can also help, help us in, in simplifying, is, is trying to understand that the, the plan is a series of strategies and a series of rules, and a framework of legal, a legal framework of rules. Uh, we are trying to simplify as much as possible the, the rules. Probably sometimes we are also leaving very general uh, interpretation in order to 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 allow also to uh, to be to flexi to to allow flexibility to spread and to and to try and to 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 be not that dogmatic in the in the in the definition of of the rules. But any comments, any feedback. Uh, and this test is also helpful for us to, to test uh, the simplification that we're trying to do with the new rules and to understand if we can make it, uh, make it better. Um, this is more or less a very, gen very general way and very fast uh, description of what we have in mind for the future cities. And uh, the hope is basically that this, this competition can help us in, uh, in defining uh, in defining it better and also to demonstrate uh, and to understand if uh, this is working or not and if there can be a space of improvement uh, and maybe to orient better some of the ideas that we have that we have in mind and now uh, we are in the process to to approve uh, and change and change the plan so this is very helpful for us and uh, we 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 look forward to see the results thank you very much Demetria. Uh, I think that uh, the, as far as I could see, uh, there is no question yet. It's probably because the explanation was very clear. But uh, I would uh, once again like to encourage uh, our participants to write any kind of questions they, they might have. And uh, I would like now take uh, five minutes of your time to uh, go through the details of the task uh, of uh, our competition located in the Kreszczagla area. So the official title of the, the uh, task is Rejuvenation and the Urban Reconnection of Kreszczagla Metro Station Area in line with the uh, Milano 2030 vision. So the vision that was just uh, pro uh, showed uh, to you uh, by uh, uh, Dimitri and explained. And uh, the area which we are speaking about is in fact the, the northeast part of uh, Milan. Here is the center of Milan and, and the northeast from it. And our task is actually composed out of three plots uh, uh, the new mixed use development, uh, the uh, renovation of the existing buildings, and the connection area. These plots are to a certain extent independent, however, connected. If you are looking uh, at them one by now, as uh, briefly introduced, uh, what we have in the plot A is uh, really the existing uh, open parking space on uh, which uh, we would like to ask you to propose uh, the uh, new uh, mixed-use development that will combine both residential and non-residential functions. I, I think that this is important to remind a uh, few of the, the items that was mentioned by uh, Demetrio. One of them is a, an extremely ambitious plan of uh, densification of uh, the uh, habitat structure with a parallel increase of the green areas. So whatever we are uh, recapturing for the new habitation, we should uh, have in mind that uh, we would like to recover as much as possible the green areas as well in this forum. In a minute, uh, Antonella will tell us about the, the uh, connection and the uh, functions of the services in, in, in the neighborhood. So uh, it should give you the input on what kind of uh, non-residential function you may like to use in this uh, area. But 
the plot number A, uh, the plot A, is simply for the development of new mixed-use uh, uh, residential and non-residential type. If we will move to the uh, second plot, uh, the, the plot B, it's clearly about the renovation strategy. On this plot today, we have three uh, big multi-story uh, buildings uh, that uh, are uh, slowly degrading, as, as, as you may see on the pictures of the facades over there, which simply needs uh, an, uh, a rehabilitation and increase of their energy efficiency uh, performance, as well as if possible, uh, the addressing of some basic comfort functions, like, for example, acoustics, and the, the isolation from uh, nearby uh, uh, metro station, that on one hand side is very convenient as the connection to uh, the city center, on the other hand side it is just uh, working as the uh, permanent uh, source of noise for, for, for the nearest neighbor. Uh, and the last plot that uh, we are uh, going to address is the connection area between uh, plot B uh, and the existing address. And in reality, this is simply to uh, design something that uh, is actually today uh, a uh, result of uh, the uh, spontaneous development of the uh, surrounding plots rather than uh, truly uh, address space uh, to connect people and to connect neighborhoods. So what we are speaking here is uh, a, a, an ability to, to uh, make this passage uh, more attractive and also an element of the master plan that will uh, uh, help uh, to uh, create this identification of the neighborhoods as well as uh, the uh, connection between the two existing. Doing this, uh, you should remember about the uh, principles of our competition. So the uh, uh, question, the principles of multicom. So on one hand side, we are focusing on the end user's experience. So still see here brief, it's nothing else than the requirements related to thermal, uh, visual, acoustic, and indoor air quality comfort when we are trying to make sure that in each function is uh, hosted in the area that uh, thanks to its design is uh, actually helping to achieve uh, a better living in the residential areas, better productivity or learning experience or return on sales in the commercial schools or office areas if you will uh, choose to uh, propose them in the program of a plot A or C. For the sustainability aspect of this, obviously, uh, these comforts should be related in, in, uh, and delivered in the safe way. So we are taking care not only on the things like uh, fire safety and uh, all things related to uh, the safety of the inhabitants, but especially for the plot B, which will remain inhabited, uh, the buildings will remain inhabited during the works, the question of the choice of the technology and the uh, ideas of revitalization are also extremely important because it will uh, immediately impact the quality of life of these people in the uh, time of construction. Obviously, things like uh, the uh, question of the, the appropriate use of not hazardous materials uh, the uh, function of and the focus on the recycle content of them, as well as plant energy efficiency, which is explained in the targets uh, that you have for the energy consumption of uh, the new buildings and for the level of the reduction of the energy need in existing buildings. These things need to be addressed. And hopefully, your proposal will. Uh, uh, 
give the breath of the new life uh, to the Crescentago area. And thanks to this, uh, the uh, prosperity of this local community will also uh, enjoy the, the increase and, and uh, become more attractive. And uh, all this uh, in this uh, three plan. The master plan should be developed for uh, covering all three of them. More focus should be uh, uh, put on the development of the new residential function on the plot A. However, the strategy of the renovation should be uh, increased uh, or should be explained uh, for the buildings on the plot. I see that some questions are arising, but before going into them, I would like to pass uh, the uh, word and the presentation to uh, Antonella to tell us more about the uh, neighborhood. Thank you, and good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to give you some further element, the uh, intermediate scale. Uh, and uh, in order to, to understand something more about the, the nature of uh, the neighborhoods uh, in which your, uh, uh, the area uh, of the contest uh, is located in, and uh, uh, in order to give you some uh, information about the uh, ongoing projects uh, that are uh, around the area, but that can affect the uh, the, the, the destiny of uh, the area and uh, also the, the offer of uh, services that are uh, in uh, uh, ongoing, as I said. Um, so, uh, Demetrio has given you the, the general aims of the, uh, the, 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 the town and the goals of the town and our urban plan. Uh, that has been said something related to the uh, the lot, and uh, now we are talking more about the uh, the, the neighborhood and uh, the the district. Uh, here you can see the the image of uh, the territory of the district three, uh, which is uh, uh, a big part of the the, the city of Milan, uh, including one hundred and forty thousand inhabitants, and uh, as you have seen. The, uh, the area you are working on uh, is in the northern part uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, our district, uh, very close to the uh, big park, uh, which is the Lambro Park, uh, crossed by the Lambro River. Um, and uh, is uh, between uh, the Lambro River and uh, the, the highway, the tangenziale, and uh, also the, uh, the the, the, the underground, the metro, and uh, uh, which is an important element of the uh, the area, is an important element. Uh, okay, uh, a closer um, picture, uh, because as you see, all the the area is a main residential area, uh, but uh, we can see that uh, there is a lack of a sort of recognizable center. Uh, the area of Crescenzago and Rizzoli, Crescenzago is the southern part, Rizzoli is the upper part, uh, is cut by the, 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 the metro, and, which is not underground here, but is a sort of train, uh, urban train. And uh, you can uh, see here that there is uh, an historical uh, urban tissue, which is different from uh, the other part. And uh, if uh, here it's easier to find some uh, uh, places with uh, shops uh, and a sort of urban life, uh, in this part uh, is uh, definitely uh, less easy. Um, and uh, um, at the same time, uh, in the area, uh, you can recognize the, 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 uh, the lot you are working on will be this one and uh, the, the park uh, here. Um, uh, has also a sort of lack of services because uh, uh, this is the, the, an important point uh, that we have to be aware. Uh, we have some uh, uh, small, uh, few shops uh, uh, just down here in Via Rizzoli, and uh, um, I would say that's it. That's it. You have to cross, uh, and it's not easy, 
uh, because there is an underpass, the, the underground, uh, the metro, and then uh, you can find something more in the other part of the, uh, of the territory. So, uh, it's a main residential area, there is a lack of a recognizable center, lack of services, and the train, the underground, I would say, is at the same time uh, an important uh, element for accessibility, because uh, in 10 minutes you are uh, connected to Loreto, for example, and then uh, with the city center. So, it's an outskirt, but at the same time it's an outskirt that uh, is closer to the, the city center because of the presence of the, the, the underground, but at the same time it's a bigger barrier with the other part of, uh, uh, of the neighborhood. Um, then, the area is uh, uh, between, uh, as I said, the, uh, the underground and uh, the, the Parco Lambro, uh, which, again, is both at the same time an opportunity, because uh, it's an important green resource of the area, uh, there are sport facilities, uh, but at the same time uh, is an area that uh, can be uh, flooded, <laughs> so we have an hydraulic risk and this would be at the base of an important project called Re Lambro, uh, ecological network of Lambro, uh, through which the uh, different uh, entities uh, uh, like the Lombardy region, the Comune di Milano uh, and other Lega Ambiente are working um, and making projects in order to make safer uh, the, uh, the area close to the, the Rambro. But at the same time, it's also um, it's a particular, a peculiar uh, river because it's a very polluted uh, river. So uh, this is another element that, uh, for a long time, uh, the, this part uh, of the park uh, was a sort of back, a rear, not the, the play a place uh, in which you can stay. So there is uh, another. Um, there, there are a lot of. Uh, uh, possibilities and a lot of uh, work to do in order to make this um, part of the park a uh, center and not only uh, a rear. Uh, then uh, it's important to underline the fact that in the neighborhood uh, there are different users because it's true that uh, it's main residential area but at the same time just in front of your lot uh, there is uh, a, a venue of an important uh, um, uh, firm, uh, which is an editorial uh, um, company, uh, that means that there are different users and different uh, uh, people uh, beside the uh, inhabitants of this kind of network, uh, outskirts. At the same time, uh, there will be uh, new inhabitants, because here there will be a new uh, building of social housing, I'm going to tell you something more in a minute. So, um, um, so, if uh, what I told you uh, are just uh, some of uh, uh, the, the main features of the, uh, the neighborhood, uh, it's important to, uh, to, um, uh, to remind uh, some projects ongoing, and I'm going to um, talk about uh, three of them. Uh, the first one uh, is just be uh, um, beside uh, the, the area you are working on, as a new social housing in Via Rizzoli 47. Uh, another one is the, the master plan uh, of uh, uh, the uh, ecological network uh, Lambro, which will have uh, a part related to the, um, some part just uh, in this area and uh, some intervention related to kitchen gardens uh, with uh, an impact also on the uh, offer of uh, social services of the area. And then the third one is a public bid for new services in the so-called uh, water, uh, the, the house of water, in a, uh, but it's an abandoned building uh, just in front, uh, again, of uh, the area you're working on. So I think it's important for you to know what is going on in, uh, in the immediate uh, um, surrounding in order to uh, better answer to the, the request of the need. Task. So, uh, 
Um, the uh, new social housing in uh, Rizzoli Street, uh, this is the building, uh, actually is a rendering, but uh, it's uh, uh, ongoing, uh, the, the, the project, and uh, uh, you know, this is the, 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 the area, this is the, 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 the three buildings uh, that are uh, uh, under construction, and uh, uh, it was a, a, an area, okay, just uh, okay um and uh, um what is um, what is needed to to say is that uh, an intervention of social housing so it means that uh, um there are services at the ground floor uh, of different kind and uh, uh, the uh, social housing foundation is taking care uh, also of the uh, composition of the inhabitants uh, and uh, the, uh, there will be different uh, um, services in order to create uh, a stronger community of the new inhabitants and uh, different services at the ground floor like a, a pharmacy and uh, other services that could uh, uh, serve not only the, the new inhabitants but of course uh, all uh, the, uh, the neighborhoods. Uh, the, the, the project uh, is made of uh, 137 apartments uh, of medium size, so 780 square meter, uh, as I said, uh, with different services at the ground floor, but also new public space, uh, because uh, in this part there will be um, uh, playgrounds, uh, a new parking lot in front of, uh, of the area, uh, uh, that again uh, will be open not only to the, to, to, to the neighborhood. Um, the master plan, uh, Relambro, uh, it, it's a very uh, important in, uh, project uh, that uh, several uh, um, subjects, uh, several, uh, several actors uh, are uh, developing uh, in the Lombardy region, the Politecnico di Milano, the, um, Milano, the Comune di Milano, Le Gambiente, uh, Parco Mediavalle dell'Ambro, which is the, uh, the, the, the park uh, um, in, uh, okay, is an entity working on, uh, on uh, the, the Lambro River. Uh, they had uh, uh, the contribution of the Cariplo Foundation in order to, um, to uh, study the, uh, all the, 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 uh, the area of the Lambro River. You can see here a, a territorial vision so, uh, from the <laughs> lakes uh, in uh, the northern part of Lombardy uh, towards the, the, the south. And our area is here, so it's a complex uh, uh, project. Uh, but uh, uh, we, they uh, have developed in uh, just, uh, they are working uh, on it uh, right now, um, on a specific part uh, related to the, uh, the area we are working on. And uh, here you can see uh, the different parts uh, uh, we are working uh, in, uh, in, the, in the part uh, close to the, the, to the Lambro River. Uh, there is a kitchen uh, uh, gardens that are uh, um, close to the, they have to be moved uh, because they are in a flood area. Uh, there are here uh, uh, spontaneous kitchen gardens that we have uh, uh, cleaned uh, with the uh, help of uh, Le Gambiente and volunteers uh, and uh, that have been uh, prepared to host uh, a, a park. Uh, there are here uh, other spontaneous kitchen uh, uh, that are in part still there, but we are trying to uh, to clean again this area because in the in the project of the master plan this is supposed to be a, an open area. Um, there will be uh, just behind uh, the uh, RHS uh, um, buildings uh, a, a new uh, a new park. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the kitchen gardens that are uh, here are going to, to be moved into, in, uh, in this part uh, with a new project that is going to uh, redefine also the access from the, the, uh, the metropolitan state, sorry, the underground station, uh, Crescenzavo, which is here, to the park, uh, which is here. Um, 
in this picture you can see the uh, the master plan uh, of uh, relambro with uh, all the uh, the, the uh, interventions uh, uh, located on uh, on the map and this is what we are working on at the moment um, in order to have a general picture uh, that from a, a, an, an environmental point of view uh, keep together the different intervention but of course you can easily understand that this uh, uh, environmental uh, and landscape uh, kind of design has uh, an impact also on the neighborhood uh, even at the social uh, social level the last project uh, that i mentioned uh, that I'm going to mention is the public bid for new services uh, of the, um, the, 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 the building, uh, which is uh, actually not abandoned, but uh, is a, a building that is never started to be used uh, for uh, several uh, difficulties that uh, uh, economical uh, difficulties we, the, the municipality of Milano had. Uh, it's uh, uh, a public bid uh, done by the Comune di Milano, um, through which the Comune di Milano, the municipality of Milan, is um, asking for uh, actors, operators that are going to keep the, the, this building for 30 years, uh, proposing uh, ser um, social services and at the same time. Um, uh, uh, refurbish the, the, the building and uh, uh, put in finally in function. So here you can see the, the, the purpose. The purpose is uh, to uh, have the, the space uh, uh, requalified with uh, uh, assigned to third parties to realize projects uh, aimed at developing social, health, cultural, sport, education and training activities, uh, which is a very wide uh, range of possibilities, but uh, in order to keep the, 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 yeah, the possibilities open. So non-profit entities and their duration is for 30 years. Um, oh, no, sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, ho sbagliato, okay. Uh, here you can see also, uh, this is some um, pages that uh, you can uh, uh, download from the, the bid, which is on the website of the Comune di Milano, and there is also uh, some uh, data about the, the, the area, so uh, this is something that uh, maybe you can uh, uh, use uh, in order to improve the information you already have. And uh, that is almost uh, invisible, so I skip it and I um, just pass to the, the, the last thing I want to, uh, to tell you, uh, which is related to the, the area uh, that is actually used as a park and where you are supposed that now is, uh, uh, is a place, uh, is an area uh, devoted to uh, public uh, and social housing. And uh, um, when we, uh, as a District 3, had to, to give the, uh, an advice to the, the ongoing uh, um, urban plan uh, regarding to this area, we had underlined these uh, aspects uh, that may be, um, th these are the, the requests of uh, the, the, the District 3. Uh, where we had we asked to the, the, the to the plan to uh, um, not forget uh, the, the need of public space and services open to the city so not only uh, social residential building but also a part uh, for uh, uh, services open to the to the neighborhood um, there is the need uh, of uh, a parking square uh, over, uh, overlooking the, the Arizzoli uh, because uh, um, there was a request uh, that the area could be devoted to the weekly street market uh, and this could be a possibility to explore at least uh, because it's something that uh, uh, several inhabitants uh, asked us and uh, uh, there are other um, elements that uh, are uh, very close to, to the area. Uh, so the, the, uh, there are the, the Via Rubino, the, the, uh, 
the, the, the street uh, which is connecting the parking lot uh, with the, uh, the main uh, road, which is Via Rizzoli, that needs to be uh, requalified and uh, refurbished. So uh, it could be another uh, element, uh, another uh, place uh, that needs uh, somehow to be made. Uh, to, to be uh, requalified. So um, this is the last uh, thing I would uh, um, I'm gonna tell you, uh, and I hope to have uh, given you a general overview of uh, the area. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Antonella. Uh, it was very uh, interesting for you to uh, hear all these additional details. I uh, believe that uh, you can only hear my voice now, but uh, it uh, is uh, not uh, really uh, so important. We've got uh, a... Is it... A... Can you hear me now? If you can answer on the chat, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, uh, with this, we, we have uh, exhausted the uh, amount of uh, presentation and slides that we have uh, so far. Uh, I could see that uh, in, in the uh, chat box, uh, uh, the only uh, comment uh, which was not related to the quality of the uh, the uh, webinar and the connection itself was related to the uh, limits we have uh, put for the maximum height of the uh, a building in the plot A, uh, which uh, we have uh, established in the contest task at uh, uh, maximum five uh, over the uh, uh, ground level. And uh, uh, that this is actually lower than in the existing neighboring building. And I think that uh, the part of uh, the, uh, uh, it is, to be perfectly honest, a subjective uh, uh, decision of the, the uh, task group and our definition of uh, uh, the uh, task where we wanted to make sure that uh, on one hand side, you will try to address this question uh, raised by uh, Dimitri of uh, uh, the, uh, the diversification and the mix of functions so that uh, we will try to develop this neighborhood without the uh, overwhelming purpose of the habitat or sleeping area only. Uh, so, uh, the area of making the overall volume of uh, buildings smaller and the uh, function of the non-residential part up to 30%, uh, from 16 to 30% uh, of uh, this uh, plot uh, use uh, should uh, uh, counterbalance the uh, otherwise uh, the habitat function of the whole neighborhood. Uh, we can have some comments in the Russian, which I'm not sure we will be able to follow quickly. Uh, what I would like to mention, just giving you uh, one, two minutes more for uh, posting any uh, questions, is uh, two things. First of all, uh, you are free to post uh, the questions on uh, our website, the multicomfort.com. Uh, in the competition uh, page, uh, there is the possibility to ask uh, questions. We have also prepared a small document uh, with the frequently asked questions that is already published there. So please take a look because maybe your questions are already there.
uh, and uh, the, uh, we have just uh, incoming questions. So in the frequently asked question, it was said that the services should cover 16 to 33 of the total build area. Do we count area of every floor of new development for total build area? Yes, that's correct. There is the power generator on the plot C. Are we uh, restricted to design new functions near it? Yes, that would be uh, the best. Uh, we uh, uh, try to figure out uh, <coughs> how movable uh, this uh, power generator is. And uh, well, uh, what we have uh, established with the uh, municipality is that this would be definitely extremely uh, uh, difficult to uh, uh, move this function with any decent cost. So uh, uh, the uh, task would be rather to develop uh, the uh, things around it rather than moving this function along. Yeah, I think that we have to If I may say, if I may say, uh, the, the city uh, point of view about the, the percentage of services uh, in the in the set of rules, the new framework that we uh, defined the, together with the plan, we decided not to uh, include quantities, and it's uh, something that we. We did really uh, intentionally, so we would like to, and I think this competition can be also a good opportunity to to see to see the the, the quantity part, so to see the numbers, the data related to the different use as a uh, as a result and not as a prescription. So uh, also to use it as a test. I mean. Uh, what is the right balance in terms of services compared to housing units uh, in uh, in a project development? This is something that probably we don't know, uh, and we are open to understand. So uh, I would keep it I would keep it free actually, uh, with the with the idea that we what we are looking for is is a qualitative mix of Different functions together with the uh, economic sustainability of the of the project, uh, so to find the balance uh, more than having more than giving prescriptions. And this is what we consider as a new as a as a different model from what we do from what we used to do. I mean, uh, we don't want to be to, to create constraints in order to fix a series of numbers that probably are. Uh, wrong or can be wrong and 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 in a way we are open to for discussion and to analyze what's what's the best balance and probably this is something we can also achieve from the competition and not give as a constraint to the competition thank you, <coughs> thank you for, for the comments uh, what uh, we are trying to say is the general direction for the uh, uh, competition uh, with the uh, use of, of uh, this uh, area. Uh, so, uh, uh, where uh, we wanted to have uh, the needs use, and uh, in reality, the scope of and or the percentages are uh, simply an indication. It's more to be able to, to, to make some comparison between the words uh, uh, rather than uh, uh, give the limits to your plan. There was also the, the there are incoming questions here, but I'm uh, afraid that uh, we sh uh, uh, slowly reaching the limits of our time available here. Uh, the we will uh, put all these questions and the related answers to the uh, frequently asked the question document on the website, just to. Uh, uh, answer probably the last one uh, about the uh, difference and 
between the devgear files dwg files that we have put and the google maps uh, we think that it's simply better to use the wg uh, uh, dwg uh, files as as this was what we have uh, got from uh, the uh, uh, municipality plan so it's probably more than the google one uh, Thank you for uh, all the questions. Thank you, uh, Dimitri and Antonella, for your participation today. As I said uh, to the participants, please write your questions. Those which have been written will be addressed in the frequently asked questions in the nearest uh, days. Uh, if you have forgotten something, use MultiComfort uh, uh, address that has appeared uh, in the conversation. We will try to address the next uh, webinar still uh, before the Christmas uh, time, so in the middle of December, and uh, we'll try to address the questions of the uh, energy efficiency regulations in, in Italy and the constraints about it. And if time will allow, also the uh, use of the uh, designer software. Uh, the appropriate invitation will follow. For today, I would like to thank you all for your participation and hope to see you next time on our next webinar. Thank you.